Uh, thank you, everyone, for signing, uh, signing up for, for this talk. Uh, I'm the Vyansh, open source community manager at like Deep Checks, and I'm also a moderator at like LMOP Space. So in today's talk, we are going to talk about like reducing hallucination and like evaluating LLMs. So as of now, a lot of people building an application powered by LLMs. So biggest uh, problem right now people are facing is like all about like hallucinations and uh, you know how do they uh, evaluate like the performance of their application. So this talk will cover that things. Uh, about deep checks, uh, deep checks uh, helps you with like the continuous validation of LLMs and AI, all based on our open source uh, core and LLM of space. So we started a LLM of space community a few months back with the idea of like uh, creating a space for all LLM practitioners. Uh, we host like multiple meetups and uh, have a, like curated resources related to LLMs. So you could just join the community at like lmops.space at Discord. Slash Discord, sorry. Um, yeah, agenda for today's talk. So in today's talk, we are going to cover the challenges for evaluating LLMs, traditional evaluation methods, and like uh, we'll also take a look at like Illuther's AI evaluation frameworks, which is like which powers uh, Hugging Face's Open AI, uh, sorry, Open LLM leaderboard, and then we'll talk about like minimizing hallucination and making your app production ready. So right now, LLM applications are everywhere, and they are even surpassing like human capabilities in like multiple tests and places. And uh, there was like few incidents we have seen in like the news as well, like, like Bing's AI chats want to be wanted to be alive, right? Uh, before we move to the next slide, uh, I would like to ask you a very uh, simple question: What is the difference between like uh, a comedian and like LLM? So my next slide is going to answer that. So. Yeah, this is like uh, what I created. Like in my, uh, I think this is like a basic difference between an LLM and comedian. A comedian knows when to stop. So we'll start from like very zero to one sort of thing. So the stages of building LLM powered applications. So if you're building an, um, you know, or if you already built uh, like the LLM powered apps, which is like any AI application. So it starts with like uh, mapping relevant knowledge databases. Then you build your app's architecture, like complete pipeline of it. And before releasing it, you start improving the performance of uh, your LMA application. You fine tune it so that it would be like ready for the, like the release. And then you deploy it to the production. So here's an example of like how is like LM powered uh, Q and Q and A app looks like. So you start with like mapping a knowledge base. So it could be your you know, docs data and website FNQs and like, you know, your past customer support histories. So you map those all into like vector databases and then you move to like the next step uh, that is like building applications where you do like uh, RAG implementations or it could be like OpenAI SDK and LangChain components. You put like all the places together at one place and like uh, you also create some second uh, phase flows where let's say in case your application is failing and it needs some human support at some point, so you create like a few uh, flows like that. And then the third step is like uh, pretty crucial, which talks about like improving your application before releasing it. So here you iterate prompts, you compare multiple LLM models. So let's say there are tons and tons of LLM models available, and uh, and choosing the LLM model totally depends on like the what use case you are building for. For example, if you're building, um, you know. Uh, 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 an application which answers like the mathematical queries. So uh, it should be like trained on like the mathematical data, not on like the historical data. So this is like uh, sort of uh, every deciding which LLM you want to use depends on your use case. And then the final thing is like achieving a good version, right? So here I like highlighted the good version, how, how you're gonna know like your application is ready for the production or you can release it because uh, LLMs are like, as you know, like how LLM works, like it is like worked on like the prediction of the next work, like probability of like all those things. So the problem here is like, uh, you need to be like pretty sure like when your application is ready for release. And we'll talk about this particular step where you can find like uh, how you can see like uh, your application is ready for production. And then you deploy it. If, uh, once you see like, okay, my application is working fine, you deploy it. And the next phase is like auto making it like autonomous and monitor of like how your app is performing and improving it over the time. So 
this was a basic example of like uh, LM powered Q and A app, or like how it looks like. And now we'll talk about like hallucination. So we came across like a lot of uh, issues where you know LMs are generating wrong outputs. You know they have like certain biases and they have like a lot of uh, random things. Uh, you know uh, they are generating. So this is like called some sort of like hallucination where they are answering things confidently, which are like wrong, biased, and other things. So I'll tell you like uh, what are the some causes of like uh, these uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, causes of hallucination, hallucinations in like LM outputs. First is in, like the biases in training data. So as you know, this like LM models are trained on like the tons and tons of data, right? And if the data is biased, so it would affect like the output of like the LM. So for example, uh, you go on internet, there are like tons and tons of data, and some data could be like uh, biased towards any particular topic. So this is like one thing. Then like the insufficient training. So there is another cause, like a uh, uh, reason where LM hallucinate. Like let's say you trained your model. So you had like tens and tens of data, but the training was like very low or it was like a little less. So it could cause like LMs to hallucinate. And overfitting, like when you have like limited data and you train them too much, right? So then it also causes like uh, uh, LMs to hallucinate. And then of course, like the incorrect prompt. So when you are using application and you do give like a, some wrong, a wrong prompt, so it's so it definitely going to give like some wrong outputs. And then like the model complexity, because we all know like these LM models are trained on like millions to billion parameters, which could like, uh, there's like a lot of uncertainties and like producing outputs. So these are the, some basic causes why LMs hallucinate. And this is like a pretty big problem because if you're building any application, for production and uh, for enterprise level production. So what happens is like uh, you don't want your apps to go wrong or you know uh, make like the user experience a little bad because of like uh, these issues. So tackling hallucination is like the one of the biggest challenge in the space right now. And uh, yeah, and like uh, there here I told you like what are the causes of like ha LM, uh, hallucinations. And now we'll talk about like the types of like uh, you know LM. Hallucination. First is like fabricated facts, right? Sometimes LMs uh, tend, tend to give output very confidently uh, that are like sort of not fact. They are like completely wrong, but they keep telling you, no, this is right. And then you, you know, uh, if you have used uh, ChatGPT or any LM model, you are like pretty familiar with this thing. Like uh, sometimes, uh, you know, these OpenAI or any LM model generates like a wrong output. Uh, then the other issue is like the prompt contradictions. So you are giving some prompt, but the output is like not relevant to the, that particular prompt, right? So this is also a sort of type of like uh, LM hallucination. And then like the incoherent responses, the responses which is like little, you know, not related to what you're looking for. And definitely like nonsensical outputs are also there. I'm not, for example, there is a few, uh, output which is like not relevant on anything related to you are asking to give some uh, solve something and it is like giving some random output so it's like nonsensical output and context conflicting so while using this LM model you gave some context right and the output is like based on like not that context but on some different thing so this is like another sort of hallucination which happens so we'll cover that in like end like how we can you know, make sure that these hallucinations do not uh, occur in our application. So I'll just give you a basic example of like uh, how hallucinations uh, look like, and uh, I'm pretty sure you all know about this thing. So hallucinations are like unavoidable. You cannot like, uh, you know, make your application which is like has like 0% uh, hallucination rate. But we can definitely reduce it, and this is like the one part which we are gonna focus. So for example, here, um, uh, uh, there's a prompt which says like, tell me about the diet of unicorns, right? So unicorn here is like a mythical animal. Uh, so it gave the output that unicorn are like herbivore. Uh, they primarily eat grass, but they also enjoy a variety of fruits, vegetables, X, Y, Z, right? So here it gave a very confident answer that, you know, unicorns eat this, this, this thing. So this is like a clear example of like how LM hallucinates. And there are tons and tons of cases that is like uh, similar to this. So here, uh, the, here is a very basic snippet of like, um, we'll discuss something called evaluation set later in this talk. So don't like consider this as core as like, uh, you know, this is just a basic way I wanted to uh, show like uh, how we can tackle these sort of things. So uh, we'll talk about evaluation set, but here's a very small example. For example, facts, we have like created a sort of set, like if someone is talking about uh, unicorn, 
So it should be like mythical. And uh, let's say L if LM output is like unicorns primarily set eat grass and fruits. So here we did like, um, we use simple libraries. I didn't mention here, but uh, you know, it's simply printed like hallucination detected because uh, unicorns are like the mythical character, uh, character and if something is mythical, it should, you know, print like, uh, you know, uh, should give results like that LM is like uh, hallucinating this response is like from hallucination. So this is like just way of thinking, not a exact how you measure like how hallucination, uh, it is not exact like how you measure hallucination, but it's, this is something related to evalu evaluation set. So now that was the part for a hallucination. We'll, co we'll cover in the end like how we can reduce it, but um, uh, we'll, this is like more important part, why evaluating elements, elements are like important. First thing is like uh, understanding model performance, right? So you build an AI-powered application for your company, right? Over the period of time, you want to see like how the model is performing, whether like the outputs are like degrading or not over the period of time, and is it like uh, you know able to solve users' problem and like uh, what is like the basic user experience look like for this uh, particular application? So this is like the first point, and identifying and mitigating biases. So Right now, with like the biggest concern with like the AI apps is like the you know biases. So they have like certain biases in it. And if you're providing uh, you know AI services, it should be neutral. It should not be biased towards anything or anything in particular, right? So it is like a very basic step if you are going to release your application in production. You need to make it sure like uh, it should not have like certain biases in it, right? Because there is like new regulations from Biden Biden's office as well regarding this uh, you know. Uh, these biases and like uh, AI regulations. Giving visibility to how uh, response are being generated. So uh, sometimes we think as like the outputs which are generated from like LMs are like you put something in black box and it's giving some random output, right? But uh, if you have like uh, some sort of evaluation criteria set, you will actually able to figure it out like how these uh, you know uh, uh, responses are being generated and you have like better control over it, right? And improving model reliability, that is like a simple thing, like over the period of time, you want to make sure like, uh, you know, uh, you keep uh, you know, the model you're using is reliable, cost efficient, and is optimized for your use case, because running LMs are extremely costly. And uh, if your use case is like uh, some small use case, then you can also uh, do this sort of things. And then the final thing is m like minimizing hallucination, which we discussed previously, but uh, we'll show it in, like later in the slide how we can tackle that. So the current challenges with like the evaluating LMs, first is like the complexity of like LMs. As uh, we mentioned, like these LMs are like uh, trained on like millions or even billions of parameters. So it becomes like sort of harder to like actually, you know, set up a, some sort of benchmark or, you know, uh, easily evaluate them. Then there is inherent biases. Because uh, if you see like the LM architecture, so it is like uh, you have a trained data and then you have like C or Python file which runs that particular architecture. So if there's a inherent uh, biases in that particular trained model, so you need to make sure that if it is like uh, generating some biased uh, responses, you stop it there at that particular level and do stuff. So this is like uh, one problem here and like uh, lack of standard evaluation metrics. So for traditional machine learning models, we used to do like blue F1 scores and uh, human evaluation in the past. But um, yeah, with the LMs, things are a little different. So it's also like sort of hard to uh, evaluate these things. So more nuanced and like comprehensive evaluation methods are needed to assess like these sort of models because uh, uh, it's uh, how complex they are. So I'll just go through like very quickly like the traditional evaluation methods. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all know about these things. Like uh, first thing is like the blue where you, um, it's called as like bilingual evaluation understanding. Uh, understudy is a metric used to evaluate the quality of machine generated translation against like one or more references. So the higher the score, better the you know quality of like the output. So it's like traditional, we, we follow this in like the machine learning models as well. And then there is a F1 score. There is like uh, you, run like uh, and you know you run like same prompt n times and like evaluate based on like uh, you know uh, precision like how many times your model was able to answer that correctly so you have like certain thing and and based on that score you calculate the f1 score and this is like another measure like how you can but these are like the traditional methods of evaluating uh, lms 
Then we talk about like the human evaluation. Human evaluation is like the process includes, you know, actual humans. It's like very expensive because you need to have like set of people uh, to actually evaluate this thing. For example, there's a prompt that says like generate a short story about robot learning to understand human emotion. And then it was like some LLM output. It created a story. So when you do like the human evaluation, the criteria is like um, factors like relevance, coherence, creativity, and grammatical correctness. So this is like something which is like being evaluated by humans. So and uh, you have like a set of uh, humans who like uh, you know do this sort of uh, um, evaluation, whether they are like strongly uh, disagree with like the output, they are you know the output is neutral, agree or strongly uh, agree. So this is like how you do like the human evaluation. So let's say if you're building a production level app and you need to do like the human evaluation, it is gonna be like very, very expensive. So we'll talk about like open LLM leaderboard. So Hugging Face open LLM leaderboard is powered by Eluther AI, it's an evaluation metric. We'll talk about like uh, Eluther AI as well. Like they, uh, it is like the engine there. So let's say you go on Hugging Face open LLM leaderboard and you say like uh, find like top 10 LLM models and you are like, hey, I found my top 10 LLM models. I am going to use it because uh, these are the best on like the benchmarks. Uh, but this is not the case. So what happens is like every use case, like for example, your company has a specific use case and these are like some global uh, benchmarks which helps like compare one LLM model to other LLM model and give you like the general idea like how good LLM is, right? But if you're actually using for production, you need to have like your own evaluation, uh, you know, method to evaluate which LLMs uh, you are going to choose for your particular use case. So here's a link to like, I should have like scanned it here, but I'm sorry. Uh, you can just uh, search about Eluther AI's LLM evaluation harness. So this is like a quite uh, easier way to like uh, measure LLMs based on uh, uh, you know multiple LLM uh, benchmarks. So you have like a lot of benchmarks, and I'll show you like uh, how like the open LLM benchmarks uh, you know on what benchmark the they rank like LLMs there. So you can just have like uh, Google search it and you can find it. So the open LLM benchmark is powered by this Eluther AI engine. They're pretty good, completely open source and like, uh, you know, you can also experiment with like your own use cases. So key benchmark is, um, benchmarks which are widely used except adopted for LLM evaluation. So here we're talking about like all the key benchmarks which are widely adopted. Like uh, the, you know, you see like news coming in, like uh, the new LLM model from Falcon did like, uh, out, you know, surpass like uh, GPT-3 or XYZ uh, models. So these uh, LLM to LLM comparison based on like some widely adop adopted um, benchmark versus like AI to reasoning challenges. We here you just give a set of a grade of school science questions to LLMs and you know, you get the answer from like particular LLMs and then you evaluate like how these LLMs are like uh, you know answering these questions. Then there's a health swag where uh, it's a test about like a sort of common sense thing, so which is like fairly easy for humans, but uh, you know hard for like uh, soda models uh, uh, because they can like do a lot of things. So. And then there is a MMLU, a test to measure like models multitasking ability. Like uh, you give like multiple tasks to like the LMs and uh, multiple LMs, and you see like how it is like generating responses, and then you create like some sort of evaluation score based on that. And then this is like uh, the truthful QA. So this is like a test to measure models. Uh, you know uh, how the risk output which model is generating, whether it's like true or like uh, you are creating any false or on like those, and then you evaluate those things and it gives you uh, the, um, you know, some error and you can say like hope, uh, and you, there's also some time things like how, in how much time it is giving responses and stuff like that. You can like explore all the benchmarks there, but these are like uh, four uh, widely adopted ben benchmarks. But this is for like, uh, not based on like your use case. So now we're coming to like exciting part, which is like advanced LLM evaluation, key concepts. So we start with like building uh, evaluation set. So let's say you are building, uh, you know, any LLM application for your uh, organization. Then you have like set of goals inside your mind that your app needs to get answer, you know, get this done or this is like the set of answer, uh, which is very close, which we want to our LLMs to do this thing. So you start with creating a very basic evaluation set, and this is like dependent. This is a manual effort, 
where you give like the prompt and then you give like the possible answers and you create like hundreds and two hundreds of like uh, responses like that. And then you evaluate each sample. Uh, so it takes like a uh, little time for you to do like the manual thing. Once you have like the set ready, then you can perform like, uh, you know, uh, uh, based on those set, you can like automate that uh, evaluation process and do this thing. So for example, evaluation criteria. So let's say if your LLM is able to answer, you're able to uh, complete the task, then it's like, uh, you know, good. And let's say if it's not, it is not able to, it is generating, uh, uh, you know, outputs with like hallucination, bias, uh, toxicity, safety, and there could be like tons and tons of property properties. You can customize it based on your organization's need. So for example, if you want, uh, if you're building anything for kids, right, uh, any AI application for kids. So you can have like custom pro properties there based on like uh, regulations and everything. So um, these are like the evaluations criteria, pretty important. So coming to the, the evaluation techniques, uh, we talked about like uh, evaluation sets and all those things. Uh, so there's a heuristic model, which is uh, you know all the traditional things we talked about, and uh, it's a uh, pretty cheap, quick, and easy to do. But again, that is like you know, and then there is a LLM-based evaluation. So here's the in interesting part. Here you are asking LLM to evaluate LLM, and to make sure that you are like getting the right responses, what you do is like you have like a sort of evaluation set which you created manually, like uh, a set of like data where you wanted evalu uh, your LLM to perform in a particular way, and then you train it on like uh, you know with another LLM and make sure that if the LLM is generating the output, uh, it is like able to answer, it is able to evaluate them correctly, uh, evaluate like the properties like toxicity and like bias and everything. So this is like uh, the LLM-based evaluation. And then there is a human-based uh, that is like manual, adaptable, inconsistent, and costly and time-consuming because uh, 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 so LLM-based and human-based are like, uh, LLM-based is like some, uh, somewhat costly, human-based is like definitely costly, and then heuristic model is like, um, you know, not very costly, right? So, but it depends on the use case uh, of uh, you. So right now, if you want to evaluate your LLMs based on your organization. So there is an LLM based evaluation and you could do it by your own. The idea is like create your own evaluation set, uh, train it with like the LLMs and like, uh, you know, evaluate it. So yeah, uh, there's also certain ways to mitigate like hallucinations. Uh, first is like uh, providing predefined uh, input templates. For example, let's say you want to reduce hallucinations from your particular uh, application. So there's a, you know, you provide them predefined input templates. Like if you uh, give like input in like this template, this is gonna generate an output in like this way. Then there's uh, something from OpenAI's reinforcement learning with human feedback. So here you see like uh, if you combine like the LLM based evaluation along with the human based, then it would be like very precise and powerful evaluation metric which you could use. Um, so, and then the third thing is like, of course, fine tuning the model for a specific use case, like, uh, you know, do the fine tuning as much as you can for your particular use case. You don't want your AI application to do all the things, you want your AI applications to do the things which you want to. Uh, then like there's uh, some context injection, like. Uh, it, it is like, uh, you know, whatever prompt you're giving, give it with like more context, it will just increase the chances of, uh, you know, getting your right uh, answer. And then like the continuous validation of, uh, you know, and evaluation of the LM. So whatever LM model you are using, make sure to continuously validate and evaluate it because uh, it will give you the idea like uh, how your app is performing, how is like LM, the LM you are using, whether it is like degrading over a period of time or not, or whether it is improving. So this is like very critical step. It's like monitoring like the, once you deploy it. So uh, yeah, so there will come, we'll talk about like uh, making LM apps production ready. So there's some best practices which you could do. Calculate more and more properties, which I talked previously that if you want to, uh, you know, publish, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to build your, for your own use case, so you can have like so many custom properties and uh, have like multiple topics, you should have like be iterating between the versions. So let's say you created a LLM app. Try to iterate with like multiple LLM uh, mo uh, models uh, and use like which is like best for you. And then, yeah, the thing which we mentioned previously, continuously validate and evaluate your LLMs. So thank you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter here at the rate as the branch. 
Uh, this is my just username if you want to connect with me. Uh, this is something about my company, uh, uh, like where I work. So we have created a DeepChicks LM evaluation model. So if you want to try it out, so there are two options to do it. One is like create your own like whole evaluation set process and create your own infra. Or you can just uh, use like any of the available you know, mod, uh, you know, evaluation platforms which provide these things. So you can start from here very quickly. Uh, you can just sign it up and see like, uh, I'm not sure about this, but uh, yeah, uh, it's better to like choose whatever way you want. So these are like, uh, yeah, this is like the pretty much it for this talk. And I would love to connect to you all. We have like a sponsor booth there. We have like some swags as well. So if you want some swags from our side, so come visit our booth. And uh, yeah, thank you again for uh, you know the attending this session. And yeah, uh, thanks again. <laughs>